Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Finance Minister Nislantla Nene delivered his major budget this week amid a number of worrying signs for the South African economy. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the highlights and lowlights. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What were the main talking points of the budget? Well, I think the overarching talking point is the tax issue. So for the first time in many years, I think in 20 years, we've seen a change in the direction of taxes and they're going up rather than down. So we've got a one percentage point increase on the personal income tax. And I think there was a wide recognition prior to the budget that there were going to be tax increases. It was just where those tax increases were going to apply and at what level. And the decision was to go for personal income taxes. I think the signal was that they wanted to send out that they were first looking at progressive uh, taxes, so looking at taxing the rich more than the poor and therefore personal income, co income tax category is the most progressive tax I think in the system and therefore went for that first. And then obviously in the current environment of falling fuel prices I think it was an easier decision to add that 80 plus cents to the fuel levy than it would have been if we had still been in a hundred dollar barrel oil environment. So we've seen our petrol prices come down, we're now going to see a massive whack uh, from April 1 in the form of these, this 80 cents levy, 50 cents of that for the road accident fund and then 30 cents for the general fuel levy. So I think that was the, the headline uh, of this budget, which is some have described as a, a tax and tolls budget because the other issue was that uh, uh, the Maha Finance Minister re-emphasised the user pay principle for the financing of the Kaateng road network. We now wait for the uh, new uh, ceilings prices for those tariffs and for the incentives that, are, that is going to make compliance easier. I think that's going to be closely watched by everyone in Gauteng, but also nationally because it's such a contentious issue. But I think the theme of the budget was really about fiscal consolidation, fiscal rebalancing. That was the, the underlying uh, issue, the, the theme and the tone was set uh, in October last year in the medium term budget policy statement when we heard that the expenditure ceiling had been lowered and there was a signal that taxes would be raised. And I think that the issue was to hold on to that fiscal consolidation line because government is what being watched very closely by the rating agency as to whether it can keep to that message that it put out in October. And it seems to be sticking firmly to that message. And the other big thing I think within this budget was the uh, trying to moderate the, the pace at which our debt has been increasing. So we, we're still seeing that debt is going to be rising massively to 2.3 trillion rand by 2017. That's a, a huge debt, gross debt stock that we're going to be sitting with. But it's still below 45% of gross domestic product. Now there was a fear that we were going to uh, pierce through that 50% level, which was a, is a, f a closely watched number. And the view is that we're going to rein that in. But still, it's a very high level. And we're seeing interest payments really are going to be climbing. And within three years, we, we're going to be at a level where we're going to be paying over 150 billion rand a year in interest payments, which is the equivalent of what we're currently paying on social grants. So, you would, so it's a massive amount that we're going to be paying back in interest. And we need to rein in that debt. And I think it was about fiscal consolidation, saying that we are taking the, the low growth environment seriously and that we need to, uh, one, deal with the revenue side, so we raise taxes, deal with our expenditure side, but we also have to moderate our, exp uh, our debt uh, load burden. And then the next big uh, imponderable is going to be around the wage bill and whether uh, government's going to be able to rein that in. We know that we've got um, serious negotiations underway with public sector worker unions who are looking for a 15% type level. Uh, National Treasury's made that clear that they're looking at a, a more like a CPI plus one, and CPI has come down with the petrol prices coming down, but in that sort of six to seven percent range is what government's looking at versus the 15 percent. So whether we're going to see another hostile labour environment breaking out, and that will be again confidence sapping, uh, is, is a, you know, we, we don't know, it's too early to say, but I think that's the next big thing that people are going to be watching. Do you think enough clarity was given on how government plans to deal with the growth sapping energy crisis? Well, as you say, it's confidence and growth sapping uh, energy crisis. I think this is the, besides the labour climate, which I think last year we could see the knock that it gave to our GDP figures last year, which, were, which came out, uh, you know, at 1.4, 1.5%, which is really nothing to uh, write home about. And then we've got this growth outlook now 
of only 2% for the current uh, year that we're in. Uh, part of that problem is really relates to the shortages of electricity. Now to expect investors um, and business to in invest in a climate where they don't know that they can you know, keep power on um, and to, to run their factories, to run their mines, etc. I think this is a, a very, very big problem for the South African economy. Now, I think there, w there were views that th uh, the minister would give a little bit more clarity on how the 23 billion rand injection into Eskom was going to be financed. They stuck with the line that it was going to be from the sale of non-strategic assets. Now, I think that he's in a sort of no-win situation here because you can't, if you're going to be disposing of assets, um, especially possibly listed assets, you can't really signal which ones those are, are going to be. That's market sensitive price moving information. So if you signal that too clearly, you're going to create an overhang. So I don't think you could do that. I think where uh, people wanted to maybe to get more clarity is whether there was going to be any more additional support for Eskom, which it doesn't seem like there is going to be, other than maybe converting the subordinated bond into equity. So there, there was a signal rather than a firm message there. And then the non-budget issues around is the environment uh, you know, conducive to getting the private sector going in terms of RPPs? So that really falls outside of the budget, and maybe that's why the finance minister didn't really home in on it. But I think there was a view that maybe a bit more clarity could have been given uh, to how we're going to deal with this. But I think we do know that there are a number of programs, and they were alluded to by the finance minister, to procure both renewable and base load capacity. We've got the coal tender out now, and we've got the um, the renewable programs, the, the fourth round is just about to be announced and then we should be entering into the, the subsequent rounds of the renewable acquisition. The big imponderable around gas is where the gas is going to come from, but we probably will see some, some form of tender before the end of the year for the gas program. So I think things on the non-budget uh, side are starting to take shape. This is going to be private sector investment. Um, and then the other signal that was given quite strongly is that government's going to back Eskom in going back to the regulator for additional uh, tariff increases to move towards uh, cost reflectivity, as they call it. Now, we've already seen the, um, that tariffs are going to rise uh, faster from April 1 than was approved by NERSA originally. So originally the approval was 8% uh, 8, 8 for every year for the five-year determination period. This year we're going to see it over 12% because Eskom already submitted a regulatory clearing account application and was partially successful there and has been able to claw back a higher tariff for this year. I think they've already made it clear that the, R the RCA applications for the second, uh, for the first year of the current determination period is in because the RCA that's already been approved was for the MIPD2, as they call it. We're now into the MIPD3 uh, period, so the first RCA application is, uh, is now ready and they'll be finalizing their second year once uh, March 31st has uh, been closed out. Uh, because uh, that was when they'll have visibility of what their cost differential was bet bef between the ta tariff that they were granted and what they, they feel they need and they prudently spent. So I think the, the backing that has been given to, um, to, the f to Eskom from the finance minister to move ahead with that. What for you were the strengths and the weaknesses of this year's budget? Well, I think, you know, when you're talking about fiscal consolidation and tax increases, these are not growth-friendly uh, developments. So you're having a situation where the government in the post-2009 uh, or 2008 financial crisis world has been the main stimulus into the economy. Admittedly, government's not a very efficient spender of money, so a lot of it got wasted and there was, has been, as we know, a great deal of corruption around government spending. So not all of it fl flows through to the economy cleanly, but it has been a stimulatory effect on the economy, the fact that government was able to have expansionary budgets during a time when you know, the private sector was forced to pull back. Now, the, the theory was that that would last for a certain period, so you would have um, the, the stimulus coming from the fisc fiscal resources, and you would have accommodative monetary policy in the form of very low interest rates, which we still have. And then by then, confidence will return and then you'll have the private sector spending and investing in the economy and picking up from where government left off. But unfortunately, there's been domestic headwinds in this economy. The two big ones I spoke about earlier, the labor volatility and hostility in the labor sector, and then the electricity shortages, which is really weighing down 
on private sector confidence and the ability for the private sector to take up the baton and move from uh, the fiscal stimulus to a more private sector led using the private sector balance sheet skills and ingenuity to get the growth going again. So I think the big, big weakness of this budget is that they had to prove to the rating agency they were walking the fiscal consolidation talk. But the other side of that coin is it's, it's growth crimping. So I think the growth message didn't get through very clearly. And I think that we need now for non-budgetary uh, initiatives. So uh, there's only so much the finance minister can do to rebuild confidence. And part of that rebuilding was to say that we're going to be responsible in the way, way we manage government finances. But the big overhang, other than the electricity and labor issues that South Africa faces, is that there's continual uh, worries about our economic policy trajectory and whether that's properly aligned. Now we have a number of plans. We've got the National Development Plan, we've got the New Growth Path, and we've got the medium-term budget uh, strategic framework that is now supposed to enact the NDP. But in the meantime, we've also got a lot of uh, legislative developments that have not really gone down well with the private sector that have caused a lot of confusion. Um, maybe because there's not, not enough attention has been paid, but also there seems to be an ignoring in certain sectors of what, say, a mining sector needs, what an agricultural sector needs, what manufacturers really need to get going, other than the electricity and the labor issues being sorted out. And I think there needs to be some non-budget interventions, a responsiveness from, uh, from the cabinet ministers and the finance minister to this lack of confidence in the economy to start getting uh, the private sector in a position where they can start taking up the baton from those fiscal resources and moving forward. And at, at the moment, we're not seeing that. And hopefully, there will be some sort of follow-up post-budget that will start seeing those developments. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching. And join us again next time for more news analysis.